I'm in the stern opinion that politics and entertainment should always be divided. Never once should the two mingle, never should any of the two be used to further the agenda of the other. I believe most of you will agree with me here, because when politics and entertainment mingle, things get divisive, muddled. It ruins the fun. However, putting on politics in an especially new kind of entertainment genre will take it forever, which is what happened right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the tragic tale of Kuryu Koko and how politics forever changed the VTuber industry. Before I start, I would like to put up a disclaimer. The intent of this video is to clarify and document the happenings surrounding the incident regarding Kuryu Koko. This is not to respark the controversy or do something of that similar vein. My channel's purpose is to archive important moments and cultures in the industry, so it was inevitable that I was going to cover this soon enough. I'd like commenters to please be civil on the comment section down below. No racism or I'm immediately removing the comment. Additionally, I'd like to say that although I have absorbed every information I possibly can, I'll only be talking about the info that's relevant to Kogo's graduation and the harassment campaign. I'm also going to miss a few things, some intentionally as they weren't very much related, and some unintentionally, as the Chinese aunties did an admittingly good job wiping evidence and spreading misinformation for the first few months of the incident. Because of that, it's very hard to verify a lot of information that were tossed around at the time. However, if you have something to add in the video, please leave a comment alongside proof for the claims. You are one of the executives over at CoverCorp. Hololive, one of the brands that are under you, is on the rise to become the most popular and widely known VTuber agency in the entire world. After three years of living under the shadow of Japan's more established agency Nijisanji, your company finally made a big break to outpace them, and it is all thanks to four elements conjuring the perfect environment for them to thrive in. Lots of translated clips and fan channels, then the YouTube algorithm recommending said clips and channels, memes around the fan base being easy to digest and understand even to outsiders, and lastly, you had Kuryu Koko, the VTuber who bridged Japan's obscure VTubing culture to the rest of the world. Shortly after you announce Hololive English due to Koko's insistence, you recognize that it is one of the hypest things in the anime community at the time. Twitter exploded and everyone is talking about it. Noise like that seemed like the project was a guaranteed success. And when the time came, it was more of a success than you ever predicted, with one of your talents even breaking 1 million subscribers in a single month. Success like this is rare. Not many companies can catch lightning in a bottle like yours just did. You never thought Hololive English would propel your company to the mainstream and bring you curious eyes from investors and consumers alike. Nevertheless, it meant the company was growing. With stocks never been higher, the talents never been happier, and thousands of people and cash coming in droves every day, you decide to sit back and take a break. It only seemed like it was only smooth sailing from here on out. What could possibly go wrong? You wake up and receive a call from one of the managers informing you of a situation. The Chinese fanbase is upset. You ask the reason why and the managers point you to a stream of Akai Hato, one of the more popular VTubers in her company, where she is looking at a demographic count on the Google statistics page and read off the word Taiwan. You laugh at the situation. It's not like Akai Hato said she was supporting the independence of Taiwan. She merely stated the name and read it off a Google page. You tell the managers the standard procedure for things like these private the live stream and give her a break for delivering unauthorized and confidential information and see if the situation tampers down. If not, have Hachama clarify or apologize and make an official PR statement if it comes to it and tell the managers to advise their talents not to do the same. But do you really need to advise your talents though? It's not like this is a big deal. Jesus, what's so wrong about reading a name off a Google statistic page? You've heard that nationalism in China has been growing rapidly to extreme levels of the last decade, but surely people are smart enough to realize that nothing the talents say is ever a political statement. Your talents, after all, care not for politics and only want to have fun. Everyone in your company's community knows this, including the Chinese fans themselves. So you take a rest again and let the success keep flowing. Another call. Kuryo Koko. One of the most important talents in your company has once again uttered the name Taiwan, also reading off a Google statistic page like Akai Hato. Calling the Chinese fanbase angry would be understating it. No, they are absolutely livid. You read the situation and realize it's not like she also made a political statement. She simply read it off a Google page. 
it seems like you've underestimated people. People after all can and will make big deals out of the smallest things. You should have known better, considering that the last time you had to issue a similar suspension for situations like this, it was for your other talents, Aqua and Choco. You see that subscribers and approvals in the Chinese web space have been falling off rapidly, and to save face, you decide to suspend the two talents temporarily. Just to calm tempers, you know? Nothing more than that. You might also actually need to push on that idea of yours to advise every talent, but not even after you make an announcement, you receive another call, and your heart sinks. Your Japanese fanbase, and all fanbase from every country in the world, is now extremely angry at you too. What you just heard is the basic summary of what happened before and during the events of the Taiwan incident as the fanbase tends to call it. As you can imagine, it was a very stressful affair to the Hololive staff, to the talents, and to the Hololive fans themselves. When Covercorp made that three-week suspension announcement to Akai Hato and Karyo Koko, every fanbase turned on Covercorp, demanding an explanation. Japanese and global fans felt insulted and angry that they would suspend them for such a small reason, and the Chinese fans felt angry that it was only a three-week suspension. In the Chinese fanbase's eyes, the punishment was too light, and in the eyes of everyone else, it wasn't even worth suspending a single day. But as stated in that story, this isn't new. Minato Aqua was once suspended for something similar that was taken out of context, and Choco too was suspended for an online quiz that she wasn't responsible for. Perhaps Hololive thought that it would be a similar affair to this one, but when you suspend the at that time most cherished VTuber in the company, the results should not have surprised Covercorp. The news divided the fanbase. One, the global community, including the Japanese, the West, and basically every country else in the world, and then the other, China. Even Hololive moments, the most popular Hololive clipper at the time expressed their disappointment with Covercorp, and decided to stop operations entirely as they felt insulted because of the incident. But not because they punished Coco, but because they did not punish her enough. But this was the least of the community's worries. The suspension announcement made global headlines, some blatantly wrong, others extremely shallow. YouTubers and political news outlets alike covered the situation. Even the Japanese government made a statement, and they all had the same core thought. That China has become even less and less appealing to do business with especially if its people reacts this much to a nothing burger incident. The Chinese fans again felt that the punishment was too light and hatched a plan that felt deserving of the sin that Karyo Koko committed by spamming their chat and subject them to obscenities, physical harm threats, doxing, and all sorts of malicious threats once they returned. Of course, a few true Chinese Hololive fans, Taiwanese, and Hong Kongers reported this to the general community, and it was quickly spread throughout the Hololive fandom. These new aunties also rallied to fellow Hololive member Aminato Aqua, using her as their goddess of victory per se, the center of the misinformation campaign, even going as far as to hide secret messages smearing Karyo Koko in a lot of Minato Aqua fan content. This is because the Chinese fans like Minato Aqua the most among Hololive members, and she was silent the whole time this disaster was taking place, while other Hololive members had expressed their concerns and wishes to her on streams and Twitter, if not behind the scenes. But not Aqua. Not yet, anyway. And on the day Coco and Hachama returned, however, the Chinese plans were not that effective. Coco and Hachama's return was greeted with a very much warm reception, and everyone thought that those threats the Chinese made were just entirely that. Threats. The spam attempts were completely useless, as fans were drowning Coco and Hachama with super chats and warm messages. However, on the following days, one of the Chinese created a browser application that would cause much trouble to the talents. They call it the Wheelbarrow, a browser extension that can easily be downloaded and be used to spam virtually anyone on any streaming platform. The app was easy to understand and use. Download it on your browser, put words in, and choose the intervals of which how many messages can be sent and just leave it on the background whenever the target decides to stream. Have multiple tabs open, open multiple YouTube accounts, and you start to see how much this becomes a problem for anyone. Kryo Koko and Hachama's stream chats the following days were being drowned out by nonsensical words and sentences that mean nothing, especially collabs with other Hololive members. Of course, everyone noticed this, and even attempted to drown out the spam by also participating in the chat as much as they can, but to no avail. However, eventually they stopped spamming Hachama as much and only targeted Koko. Reason being that they wanted to focus on Koko alone because as stated by Hololive moments, Hachama's incident fought to them like an honest mistake, while Koko's actions 
being half American and all, was very much intentional to stir the controversy. So instead of being spread thin by having to watch two members, the Chinese aunties now have decided to concentrate entirely on Coco and decided to harass her with YouTube and Twitter spams for months, creating bot after bot until the appropriate punishments were delivered, which was her termination from the company. However, they weren't just satisfied with harassing Coco. Cover themselves, anyone that interacted with Coco and Coco's fans were also being targeted. Chinese netizens would copy the account details of active Twitter fan accounts and pretend to be the said fan while spreading misinformation. Sometimes, this even resulted in the real account being suspended due to the false reports by the Chinese netizens. Not only that, but there was even a Chinese netizen who impersonated Oli on Twitter and wreaked quite a bit of havoc, getting as far as to get a block from Coco herself. Even clippers were being targeted, being botted in the comment section, dislike bombed, and even got active into spreading misinformation whenever a community member experienced hiccups with CoverCorp itself. Because of these activities, Hololive Saves was launched, a Taiwanese-managed Twitter account dedicated to providing information about the moves of Chinese antis for CoverCorp and the fanbase to see, identify fake accounts and spam channels, and provide insight to the plans of the Chinese netizens. People thought that the Chinese were going to move on from this in like two to three months. It's the internet after all. People don't have much attention span in these kinds of issues, but not the Chinese, no. See, they are too politically sensitive to just be swayed by two to three months. No, this controversy was getting bigger and bigger every day, to a point where even the Chinese companies and government eventually got involved. However, before we proceed, I need to explain to you why China would act like this. It's not just because of their political fragility that's been ingrained in their education or the hard nationalism, but also because they felt betrayed. See, to give credit to the Chinese, they were actually a massive help to the growth of Hololive in general before CoverCorp expanded into the global scene. In fact, I can even say that China played a huge role in the introduction of Hololive to the rest of the world. Hololive had a pretty massive Chinese fan base and was essentially the training ground for Cover's expansion plans. In comparison, at the start of 2020, Hololive had a collective 4.4 million subscribers overall on YouTube, but on Bilibili, they had a collective subscriber count of 4 million. These numbers are not that far off. So you can see how much the Chinese loved Hololive. Not only that, but Azure Lane, a Chinese game, was also one of the most instrumental and important collaborations that could have ever occurred to Hololive, as the game introduced Hololive to a lot of English-speaking countries all over the world, owing to the game's fan base being diverse and spread out as well. All of this and more are reasons as to why the Chinese felt betrayed by CoverCorp. And to be fair, those partaking in the harassment campaign were only a couple hundred people as opposed to the literal millions of people that still supported Hololife. Chinese Hololife fans who were smart enough to recognize that what Coco said was not a political statement or those who didn't care about politics at all existed, and they made sure to voice their sadness and frustrations about the situation in Twitter, Bilibili, Reddit, Western forums, and even on the talent's YouTube channels themselves. Suffice to say, the actions of these insane few did not represent the Chinese Hololife fans, but it did represent China, as we'll soon learn further into the video. To summarize, the Chinese fans, or at least those who took part of the harassment campaign and started to hate cover, took this entire situation as a sort of ungrateful betrayal to the demographic that helped Hololive rise up the ranks in the first place. In a situation like these, Press release statements would need to be launched and quickly, but Cover's PR took too long which worsened the situation, and when it was released, it wasn't really effective at conveying a good intended message. See, there was a discrepancy between the Chinese and global PR statements, which caused massive confusion. The latter statements read that Hololife suspended the two for disclosing confidential and appropriate YouTube analytics, but the former statement basically said that they supported China's One China policy, meaning they were throwing Taiwan under the bus. This caused mass outrage in the global community as you can imagine, causing an uproar and influx of memes all expressing how cover is basically a Chinese slave, dog, and other forms of subservient entities. However, even in the Chinese web space, this was not enough, because if cover truly meant what they stated, why are they giving different statements on Japanese and Western social media that's not declaring their support of the One China policy? The Chinese fanbase gave them an ultimatum side with us, or go away. Obviously, Cover did not want to go away just yet. They wanted to save face, so to address this discrepancy, they yet again launched another PR statement. But as expected, this too did not fix anything, 
as it only explained the sequence of events that everyone already knew and announced how they just wanted to find that balance again to make sure that either fanbase would not be torn up like this ever again. Additionally, Corporate thought that it was a good idea to have Yago come out and publicly apologize for his mishandling of the situation, which is to be fair, kind of true. To which, they also would announce that they would entirely cut down months worth of salary from the CEO to show that Yago is truly sorry, and in hopes that to the eyes of the Chinese fans, this would be enough penance for both Cover Corp and Coco. However, this did two things instead, both of which are to the detriment of Cover Corp. One, it only made Chinese netizens laugh at Cover Corp and have this sense of superiority because as you've seen, Cover was basically bowing to China now, which every company was doing at the time. Yet this did not fix the harassment issue. The Chinese still demanded that Coco be removed out of Hololive, which was also out of the question since Coco was too important for Hololive to ever kick out. Coco, as we've established, is Cover Corp's biggest moneymaker at the time, and she's also the bridge to the West and the East the face of the English-speaking community that Cover was trying to appeal to. She was a very big reason for Hololive EN's launch and success, and if they removed her, it would not bode well for the English-speaking fans and even their domestic audiences. The second thing it did is that it made everyone else extremely angry regardless, because at this point in time, everybody in the world already hated China. Outside Hololive, nobody liked China. Japan distrusts them, the West is the same, Southeast Asia and South Asia hates them for territory reasons, Europe is also starting to dislike them, and the Asian Pacific, most especially Australia, had its own gripes and conflicts with China. Basically, this happened in a time where the global politics and eyes of the world were starting to recognize China's misdemeanors and extreme arrogance. So when this came out, people wanted cover to go against China and not bend the knee, as they had already seen many companies do so for the money. So when cover did exactly that, they were met with disappointment and well, unsurprise. It seemed like whichever direction cover went, there was a backlash. Not only that, but then information of an extremely viral video in Bilibili where a Chinese auntie has spread misinformation about Hololive then surfaced. This video's virality is nothing to scoff at by the way. It has attained over 2 million views at the time of this capture in the 25th of October 2020, which I'm sure has even more views now. As you can guess, this wasn't good for Hololive. Even Chinese citizens outside the Hololive fandom found itself furious about Hololive's action and decided to join the harassment campaign. With the situation getting progressively worse for cover, it seemed like everything they seemed to do only added fuel to the fire. Two months passed, where people thought the Chinese would just fuck off in a few months, it only seemed like their momentum was only increasing. That wheelbarrow web application received frequent updates from its developers to make sure that the harassment campaign became more efficient with every update. The sports festival stream on Coco's side has been raided and cover seemed like it was doing virtually nothing for Koryo Coco, which only made the community become even angrier at them. The global community was not happy with cover's countermeasures, or lack thereof. Some demanded cover, being a tech company and all, should develop a tool that filters the spam by identifying the age of the accounts and putting on a limiter. Some also demanded that YouTube add changes to their live streaming services by adding spam protection and functions much like Twitch does, especially for Koryo Coco, which was at the time the biggest super chat earner in all of the world. But these demands ultimately led to nothing. Some even theorized that they may be doing this to force Coco to graduate herself. This way, Coco would take responsibility for the graduation and that cover's hands would be clean. Anyway, the Chinese netizens launched a misinformation campaign to confuse the community too. And it worked, taking to Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, and to forum sites to incite hate towards Koryo Coco and ultimately cause mass confusion. With this growing number and frequency of attacks, it only seemed like the Chinese passionate hate for Koryo Coco was growing day by day instead of declining. But then curiously, on October of 2020, Cover Corp announces the move of all Hololive China members. No, not graduate move, as in, they'll transfer the girls to another company with their assets and models intact. This was surprisingly followed by calm and level reception by the global fanbase, thinking that though this was sad, it was ultimately for the best, since after all, Hololive China girls wasn't involved in the situation and they are surely stressed from all the pressure. After all, the Chinese branch of Hololive has been quite vocal and active in their attempt to quell the hate that the Chinese netizens have. Why oh why has this happened? Well, let me tell you. Let's talk about Hololive China and focus on one particular person that many consider is the key player of this entire conundrum, Artia. 
On the surface, Artya branded her community as a politics-free platform, stating that politics has no place in her community and that neutrality and civility has to be observed. And really, that was all the global fan base needed to know. In fact, that's what they expected, professionalism and common human decency. The global community was still pretty chill with the China girls even after Coco has endured so much. But when the announcement to move was launched, everyone was of course pretty worried. With Artyar herself even expressing fear, making ominous tweets, and all kinds of statements that made it seem like something bad was going to happen. Of course, the global community responded to this with comfort, telling Artya and the China girls that it's all going to be fine, that nobody blames them, that everyone loves them. The air was anxious in the Hololive community and everyone waited for official news with bated breath. But then Cover did a 360 on them and they were no longer going to pass the girls to a new company. Cover was no longer going to let them have their assets, their names, and their models. Cover was fully disbanding them. This was of course responded to by massive backlash from the Chinese community. Why would Cover do that? Why would they retract their previous plans and impose this new injustice of a measure? The entirety of Hololive China and their community was distraught, especially the talents themselves and even Artya was going as far as to post extremely concerning tweets expressing her frustrations. However, amidst this rage and heat, in the background there are a few Chinese fans, Hong Kongers and Taiwanese that voiced support for their graduation, saying that they deserved it for being assholes, for fueling the drama, for contributing greatly to the current controversy. The global community chalked them up as one of those information spreaders because in what way would Artya and the rest of the girls contribute to the controversy if they openly declared that their community would be a place of neutrality? However, those background cries condemning Artya, Sivia, Rosalind, and Doris has now gotten louder. 4chan, Kiwi Forums, LolCow, and a lot of other forums have started talking about them, and these four names are usually the one they are angry at. For some reason, Spade Echo is rarely mentioned and Yugiri is never mentioned with hostility at all. Why is that? Why are they suddenly outed as being key parts of the controversy? Well, after Artya and Doris watched Wolf Warrior, a seemingly innocent Chinese film along with her viewers, nobody in the global community seemed to bat an eye and recognize the context of the film. That is, until someone pointed something out. Wolf Warrior is a well-known Chinese propaganda film and that Artya and Doris watching it is a message. And that message is fuck everyone else, we are loyal to the CCP. Slowly, people are starting to wake up from their rosy-colored view of Hololive China. Something was going on. Maybe those Chinese and Taiwanese fans that tried to tell us this was up to something all along. Maybe Cover had a reason to revert their decision and push the graduation. Maybe we were always being deceived by Hololive China. Well, I'm going to tell you the answer right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes, everyone was being deceived by Hololive China. Let's pull back the curtain and rewind for a moment. While Artya and the gang were declaring neutrality and the politics-free narrative on their community and platform, behind the scenes on their alter channels, they were doing the exact opposite. On their alter pages and channels, Hololive China and Artya most especially would actively incite their fan bases to keep on harassing Karyu Koko and carry on with the spamming. Their phrasing are often similar. Hold the bottom line. Their bottom line being their politics and that they need to defend it. Artya even has a history where she said she participated in a cyber attack against Taiwan during a Facebook event, where she proudly says that even she was lauded by their local news outlet. Suffice to say, Artya and these four Hololive China girls were the villains and traitors of Hololive after all. However, these kinds of new information as you can imagine is pretty difficult to swallow, especially to a lot of non-Chinese Hololive China fans. Many of the fans were still in denial trying to disprove the evidences. Basically, they were high on copium trying to make sense of the situation, but in the end, the evidence was just too great to ignore. Siam still supported Hololive China despite knowing what absolute monsters they are because these people were too attached. Cognitive dissonance tends to react in this manner. There's a video done by Zero's Void relaying the evidence and other shenanigans by the Chinese aunties and Chinese girls, so if you want more information about them, the link for that video will be on the description. But as you can imagine, for the stark majority of the community, Hololive China fans turned against them. How could Hololive China do this to their fans after all? It takes a special brand of evil to knowingly lie to your fans and even laugh at how stupid they are for following you, at how gullible they are to believe you after all you've done and still support you regardless. They were people that supported the China girls through thick and thin. 
despite knowing what they had done, who protested for their sake when cover changed their mind and when their graduation was up and coming. How could Hololive China be such pieces of shit? This was the consensus of the general global community, where before everyone raged about the graduation of Hololive China, now people supported it. In fact, they wanted it to happen quickly. To them, behaviors like these should not be tolerated in any way. Personalities like these should not have a global audience, because if you cannot even treat someone with basic human respect just because of a political incident that was not even your target's fault, then again, you are a special brand of evil. Artia and the girls have done more things than this, mind you. Consulting with people with the connections, spreading more and more these actions are extremely sensitive, so I'm not going to cover them here. Research on your own accord, but the general gist is that Hololive China, these four members especially, has fallen and that the general community bids them good riddance. But how about the other two China members, Yugiri and Spade Echo? Well, there was reason for them not to actually join the harassment campaign. In fact, because of their circumstances, they may have been against it entirely, but is unable to voice these because they are afraid that the Chinese antis will come for them too. The reason? Yugiri and Spade Echo are from Taiwan. This information may not be new to a lot of people, but to those that are new to this, I suppose you now see why they were such in a difficult situation. Remaining silent was really all they could do. In fact, it was the best thing they could do. Artya even allegedly harassed and bullied Yugiri solely because of that. After the revelation of these information, Hololive China members started to become more transparent about their true identities and stopped putting on masks. Meanwhile, things went worse and worse for Coco and Hololive. In November, her streams have become even worse. The antes were very much active in virtually all her live streams except her Asakoko news streams or any morning streams really when a majority of the antes are still asleep or busy. The spams get especially intense and spread out whenever she collabs with other people. In this time, Hololive China's graduation dates will be posted, but also another thing happened regarding the Chinese antes. Aqua. As I've stated before, the Chinese were using Aqua as their banner rallying to her as she was their most favorite ever. However, in a Minecraft stream where Coco and Aqua would meet each other in the game, Aqua did the unthinkable, at least to the Chinese. Aqua greeted Coco. This did two things. One, generate a bit of hate for Aqua as Chinese fans who rallied under her were in shambles and even going as far as to make edgy poems about how their lady betrayed them or something. The second is that it confirmed to the global community of the Hololive fans that Aqua wouldn't give in to Chinese pressure. A very laudable thing to do, especially since the community just saw Covercorp bow down to China. But while this gave some hope to the Hololive fans that they'd stop using Aqua as a banner and reduce some of the hate, it did neither of that. Chinese netizens still used Aqua as their banner and they did not reduce the spams. They instead intensified it. It got to a point where Coco had to stick to memberships only mode for several weeks. Speaking of Coco, let's talk about Coco for a bit. When the harassment campaign and the spam started, a few Hololive members were reluctant to interact with her online, afraid that the spams were going to come for them as well. I don't blame anyone for doing this, as something like this is really scary, but this was exactly what the antis wanted, and unfortunately, it worked for a few Hololive members. This case especially rang true to Hololive English, which was essentially forbidden by management to interact with Coco for the time being. Though Coco did confirm that they do frequently message each other behind the scenes, it was still quite sad considering that Hololive English basically existed because of Karyu Koko, and the fact that she was not able to publicly make contact with the branch that she was majorly responsible for is… sad. Additionally, Koko's growth rate was significantly reduced. She had an average of 3 to 5k daily subscriber rate, but when the spam started, it was reduced to 1 to 2k daily subscriber growth ultimately ruining her plans to attain 1 million subs by the end of 2020. This was made worse by the fact that Coco wasn't apologetic about what she did. While Hachamad made an apology for the feelings she hurt during her return stream, Coco knew she did nothing wrong and put up this sign whenever she ended the stream. Fuck you and never come back. Many speculate that this was for Artya and her gang, but the general consensus was that these were for the Chinese antis that are on her streams. A sign like this is respectable and honestly admirable in her situation in the global fanbase's eyes, but it fueled even more hate from the Chinese antis. Her live view counts also decreased significantly, owing to the fact that her chat was always being spammed. The chat is integral to the viewer and the streamer, and if the viewer cannot interact with the chat, we won't have much fun. The spams made sure that this was not to happen, as Coco often resulted to having to go members-only mode in most of her streams. 
Although this ensured that there was peace in her chat, it also disables your average viewer to participate, which unfortunately dissuades a few viewers from continuing to watch her streams for so long. This was especially evident during her 800k karaoke milestone, where she was torn as to what to do as she didn't want to disable the non-members from participating since it was a milestone stream, but she really needed peace in her chat for the stream to go smoothly. However, even with the membership's only mode, she wasn't 100% safe. The Chinese aunties would often spend money to buy memberships just to spam her and send aggressive super chats, even going as far as to join her games whenever she plays a multiplayer game like the case with the Among Us stream, where a Chinese auntie infiltrated the memberships and managed to get inside the lobby, where he or she would proceed to shit talk Coco. These course of events and the shit ton of spams that she endured made her voluntarily want to take a break for a second time on late November. In a wholesome display of fan affection, members and fans would often gather at her waiting room chat to spend super chats and send wholesome messages to Coco during her break, to which Coco would also be present and receive the love her fans gave. Even still, during her break the harassments from the Chinese went on further. She decided to stream on her outdoor channel during her break, all of which you guys are aware of by now. But even on her outdoor channel, she wasn't safe as even in her NND and Mildom channel, the spams were still present. No matter what she did, Kiryu Koko or the woman behind her could never take a break from the Chinese aunties. To make things worse, the people managing her account accidentally made a mistake by making one of the aunties a moderator in her channel, resulting to many members and fans getting shadow banned. This sparked further outrage towards CoverCorp and their poor management of Koko's situation. But of course, this affected Koko the most. The mounting stress, the pressure, the many mistakes. Everywhere she went online, every time she goes into the digital space, the aunties were always there ready to harass her, and whatever she did, it would always be vilified and twisted. Coco had endured so much stress and withstood so many harassments and threats. She tried to play it off as cool and tried to humor the situation, but everyone has a threshold, and Coco was reaching hers. Every day she was being harassed, every day she could not take a break, over and over again, the aunties would always find a way to turn everything against her. Until finally, she broke. Coco, until all this time, truly stayed strong. Enduring what can only be named as a state-sponsored harassment campaign is no mean feat, but even people as strong and hard as Kiryu Koko would eventually crack under that much stress. Discord servers, 4chan initiatives, and all sorts of countermeasures were formed to try and mitigate the spams, to make sure nothing like this ever happens ever again. But none of these resulted in anything significant, because in the end, Koko, CoverCorp, and YouTube were the only people that could truly do something about the situation. I try to be reserved and professional as I possibly can whenever I make videos like these, but I have to say, it takes a special brand of evil to unironically enjoy someone cry in anguish. As you can imagine, the Chinese netizens were happy about this, celebrating over in NGA, and it occurred on the day of the Chinese New Year too. The Hololive community felt powerless, and in a lot of aspects, they actually were, especially with even more terrible shit that China was about to slam CoverCorp with. Let's now talk about the happenings outside the Hololive community. I want to clarify what I said when I mentioned that this harassment campaign, while it may not speak for the Chinese Hololive fans, does speak for China, and that this is essentially a state-sponsored harassment campaign. See, while the news YouTubers and the Japanese government have said their piece and dropped their two cents about the topic, many Chinese companies and the Chinese government themselves also made a response. Because of this incident, Every Chinese company out there blacklisted Hololive. Chinese games, Chinese products, literally anything that was made in the mainland, Hololive wouldn't be able to have any sort of interaction with. The first of these incidents came when Hololive was promptly banned to stream or play Genshin Impact, and it was immediately active after realizing that the words Kiryu Koko was immediately censored in the game. Then, Muse Dash did the same. This came later though, when Hachama streamed the game before promptly having the live stream get privated. Then Gura's Muse Dash stream was also taken down. Many people felt betrayed by this, especially considering that Gura gave their game free publicity and funneled tens if not hundreds of thousands of people to purchase the game after a really impressive display of her Muse Dash skills. The next came into the form of the ASOS Hololive collab. 
See, days before the live stream collab would occur, the Chinese ASOS branch incited a harassment campaign against the Japanese ASOS branch over on Twitter to discourage the Hololive collab from happening. Again, this is very petty and evil, but regardless, it worked. While Botan and the rest of the members were able to receive their free items, the collab stream was ultimately cancelled, adding another victory for the Chinese. As you can imagine, backlash followed suit. ASUS, being a Taiwanese brand doing something like this is very disappointing. No one was angrier than the Taiwanese themselves for having one of their country's brand bow down to China. But again, this went nowhere. The person who made that incitement, by the way, was never fired. The most recent act by China, however, is the censorship and exclusion of Momo Zuzunene in the anime The World's Finest Assassin got reincarnated as an aristocrat in the credits on the Chinese version of Bilibili. This caused her great stress, as you probably heard, potentially even contributing to her depression that she said she was diagnosed with in late 2021. There's probably more, but I don't want to list them all here as it would make this video longer than it needs to be. But by now, I'm sure you now realize what I meant when I said that this was a state-sponsored campaign. China absolutely hates Hololive now. While there are still Hololive fans and clips in Bilibili and there are still forums talking about Hololive, China as a whole isn't letting Hololive off the hook. Additionally, the Chinese Communist Party announced a new law in the middle of the controversy that were to hit anyone using virtual avatars. That law being a requirement to give out all your private information to the government in order to operate in China-owned services. So yes, if you're a Bilibili streamer, one mistake and the government would literally have the power to dox you and there wouldn't be anything you can do about it. When this got announced, many people saw it fit that Hololive pulled out when they did, because theoretically, Cover would need to give out every talent's personal information to the Chinese Communist Party, and that is dangerous for obvious reasons. To say the least, Cover Corp dodged a bullet. However, this also did another thing. It discouraged a lot of Japanese VTubers from staying in the Chinese market. Lots of Japanese VTubers were migrating from Bilibili to YouTube, Niko Niko Doga, and Twitch after this law was passed and after they heard of the controversy. Because they realized that having these kinds of Chinese fans was essentially like being in an abusive relationship. The Chinese are very difficult to please and very easy to piss off. They could easily be the next Karyo Koko. When this migration occurred, it also resulted in the way you'd expect. These crazy fans, as you expected, turned on VTubers that were migrating away from Chinese social media and spammed them with the same wheelbarrow web application, while also harassing them on Twitter and basically forcing them to stay in Bilibili. Like I said, they're like an abusive relationship. I mean, forgive my lack of professionalism here, but Jesus Christ, they're even worse than deranged Japanese idol fans. Some still stuck to their decisions to leave, others caved in and stayed, others did a half measure by still partaking in both. Other than these, the Chinese were also very active in any Hololive events. The 2020 Beyond the Stage event was being illegally pirated into many streaming platforms. Although their yearly Hololive concerts were always being pirated prior to this year, this was different since there was malicious intent involved. However, this went nowhere as Hololive fans were on the prowl to find any illegal broadcasts in any websites and was like lightning to report them, much to the dismay of the Chinese antis. It was not only the Beyond the Stage event too, but literally every concert that followed, like Hololive Gen 5's Blue Clapper concert. But again, not many people tuned in to these streams anyway and they were being closed down in less than 10 minutes every time. December passed and Hololive China finally graduated. And when they did, that was when the Chinese upped their threats. See, when the Chinese antis gave Cover Corp that ultimatum to stay in China and ban Karyokoko, or to be gone entirely, you already saw what Cover Corp ultimately decided on. Cover jumped ship from China entirely, and this of course made the Chinese very mad. The graduation of the Hololive China members was to them another slap in the face. While initially it seemed like Cover was bowing to China and was caving to the pressure, in the end they completely turned around and decided it was not worth it. They left China for a multitude of reasons. One, they had just launched their initiative to expand into the rest of the world, especially to the West, where the weeb culture was booming, and booting Coco out right here and now would put brakes on that initiative, as Coco was the bridge of Japan to the rest of the world. It would cause complete public distrust, not just in the Western side but also in the domestic side as well, as Japanese fans absolutely loved Kiryo Coco. Hell, she wouldn't be the world's most super chatted VTuber in that time if she wasn't. The second reason was the revenue. After a thorough review of the revenue they got from China, 
Cover realized it wasn't worth it. See, Hololive may have a large number of views and subscribers in China, but the money they got from China wasn't entirely as big and concerning as they thought it would be, so Cover didn't have to lose sleep about losing extreme amounts of money when they'd pull out. However, looking at the West, they were raking in fat stacks. Kali's Super Chat War, Gura's insane ad rev, the creativity that Amelia Watson displayed, and even Takodachi's having Ina be displayed in Times Square on her birthday all meant that it seemed like there was much more money to be had in the West and that they were more amiable and easier to do business with. Now of course, Japan is still the major source of income for Hololive. No other region comes close. But income from English-speaking countries were significantly larger than income from China, and this fact made it easier for Cover to completely pull out. It's hard to say if Cover would have done the same if, say, someone else that wasn't as important as Kyo Koko was instead embroiled in the controversy, and if revenue from China was a lot larger. If that was the case, Cover would have probably bent the knee. After all, foreign companies only bow to China because of the money, so if a company isn't able to make much money in China, why would they need to bow? The Chinese realized this and was absolutely angry. They made another threat. To them, at this point, Cover was completely unforgivable. Cover had reached the line of no return and thus their harassment campaigns would be insistent from now on too. They threatened that even after Kiryokoko graduated, they would still be there, harassing the talents that were close and involved with her, especially Fubuki, Hachama, Karata, and a few others. They would eventually make fruit of this threat by going to Fubuki's stream at certain times and also spamming her. The Chinese citizens didn't just want to bring Koko down, they wanted to bring Cover Corp down as well. However, at this point, there was a silver lining. Not to the Chinese antis, but to the Hololive fans. The spams were getting less and less intense by each passing week after February. The number of dislikes on Karyokoko's streams were reducing from the usual average of 4 to 6k to 1 to 2k. The Chinese antis had a conundrum. They were getting fewer and fewer. They were getting divided. They were getting internal conflicts. Groups were divided as to how to approach the harassment campaign. Some groups opted to spare everyone else and just focus on Coco and her collaborations as then their message and their honor would be more apparent, I guess, as long as they stick to their target. To remind you, their message is that Coco is the sole culprit and target and that these antis had standards. But other groups opted not to do that and just wanted to target everyone. Which was why sometimes you'd see a Hololive member or even a random indie get spammed even without interacting with Coco. What happened? People in their groups were angry, to the point of even quitting. Their forces were spread too thin and they even had a fight with the developer of the wheelbarrow web application. It's hard to confirm if those were intentional to make it seem to the NGA lurkers and spies that they were getting divided, but regardless of the truth, the results spoke for themselves. Their numbers were thinning and the spams were getting less intense. Now the drama inside their little faction is not something I'm going to talk about thoroughly as I would need to introduce to you all a dozen or so characters and provide full context. Besides, it's not exactly relevant, but what you need to know is that the morale of the Chinese antis were getting lower and lower. Some stopped because they were just plain tired of booting up their browsers, opening or purchasing like 10 Google accounts to spam, and then opening up multiple tabs every single time and every single day that Coco streamed, and to no effect too, because of memberships only mode. The antis knew that they weren't exactly going to bring cover down, but they still wanted to do it out of spite, and ultimately, it only served to waste their time, energy, and money. Many were starting to realize this and smartly decided to just stop entirely. Some were satisfied with the fact that they got what they needed to see, Coco being miserable, as Coco had already cried in late January. This was no surprise. This is the internet after all. Things like this, no matter how heated, would eventually die down. And the Chinese passionate hate for Kuryo Coco and Hololive was already starting to dissipate. Coupled by the fact that the initiatives to combat the harassment and spams were getting more plentiful and there was a growing number of people reporting and policing the antis, the misinformation campaign and the Twitter activity started to slow down. There was still chaos and activity in there, but it was considerably less than what it was in October to December. By the start of the harassment campaign, there was an estimated 500 to 700 Chinese netizens spamming and harassing Coco and Cover. By February to April, there was only around 70 to 80 left. During and after that time, there would be times where Koku didn't even have to turn on memberships only mode anymore due to her new additions of mods and the relatively few spams that were going around her channel. Ultimately, around April and May, Koku's stream started to get really really peaceful. There was the occasional spammer and there was some activity in Twitter, but at this point the worst was already over. There was virtually no spams in almost every single stream she made moving forward and she didn't need to put on memberships only mode as much for a great many weeks. 
Some people speculated that Coco got herself a little program or even help from YouTube that somehow filtered spams. Some suggested the antis just gave up, judging by how there were virtually no spams in some streams but then there's some activity in others. This was especially evident in her new outfit stream. A stream as huge as this would normally be a high priority target for the spammers since there would be a lot of people watching and the chaos that'll ensue would be the kind of thing they want to see. However, if you take a look at it now, in the entirety of the streams, there are virtually no spams. Looking at NGA though, there would be sometimes discussions as to why their spams aren't working anymore, so the possibility of Coco having protection against these spams would not be so low. This theory would be further enforced by the fact that it seemed like the spams were working everywhere else except on Coco's streams. It was probably something that would only stop bot spams, as occasionally, manual spams would be seen in Coco's chat, thus her resulting to go slow mode in order to counter that too. Whatever the case, things were starting to look up between April and May. With this new application stopping spams on her channel and a shit ton of mods ready in a lot of Hololive members' chats, things were starting to look up. The Chinese no longer had much place to hit Hololive except Twitter, but even that was starting to dwindle. With all I've stated, it seemed like it was only smooth sailing from here. The antis were already starting to lose heart, Coco potentially had some protection, and the streams were starting to get peaceful again. Except maybe for Coco's Twitter, but yes, it was supposed to be good tidings from here on out. But as you know, when things tend to go swimmingly, terrible things tend to happen soon after. On the 8th of June 2021, Coco made an announcement in her channel. Tensions rose. Some tried to quell the anxiety by making light jokes and trying to see through Coco's heart attack inducing announcement as nothing more than playful clickbait. But the more astute viewers noticed signs of tragedy. There would be no Hololive members streaming when this particular announcement would air. It was mass advertised in all of Hololive's social media platforms and the description was empty. And finally, when the announcement finally aired, the entire Hololive community fell in despair. Um, I will be. Uh, leaving Hololive. On. On July 1st. Chaos followed. Angry rants from various forum sites, grievances being expressed on social media. It was as if you were told that a precious family member had cancer and that they only had one month left to live. The community was in shambles. They were mourning, crying. They couldn't process and believe it yet. Of all Hololive members, Coco was the last a lot of people wanted to go. She was one of the most important and beloved people in Hololive. And the aunties? Well, surprisingly the reaction wasn't immediate cheer. It was actually more confusion. They knew their attacks and spams were no longer working in the past couple months. I mean, don't get me wrong, they tossed a party over at NGA and various Chinese sites for a tremendous victory, but everyone else had a question like them. Why? As aforementioned, the Chinese antis were no longer much of a problem, but many others still pointed this as the main reason that Coco left, and for good reason. To many people, Cover didn't do much for Coco. And perhaps even Coco herself already had plans to leave in the past but only did it now because this was the time when things started to settle and her fans started to relax. After all, many people speculate that Coco had no reason to graduate from Hololive. She even stated it herself, that she wanted to stay in Hololive for a really long time. Some people pointed their fingers at Cubercorp, and understandingly so. These people believed that Coco was being forced to leave by management and that they had somehow struck a deal to make it seem like Coco was doing this out of her own volition. They speculated that Cover wanted to go back in the China scene, a theory that was taken in by immediate joy and smug by the Chinese aunties as they pictured that Cover would come crawling back to China. But of course, as you see now, this theory isn't true. In general, people could only speculate as to why Coco chose to graduate. Her words seemed to not be forced. She genuinely seemed like she wanted to leave. But why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is an entire saga of its own. One that deserves its own video. Besides, this one is already long enough. I want to get my thoughts out there. Coco was my Oshi for a few months. While it may be Pecora's clips that got me to find Hololive, it was Coco that made me stay. Now, I myself was raised with heavy Chinese influence. I studied and grew up in a Chinese high school for 6 years, had a lot of Chinese friends that I'm still good with, and is quite fond of Chinese culture. 
So suffice to say, I'm very familiar and passionate with Chinese culture and China in general, though not politically, I think I should say that. What I'm trying to say is that among the entire community, this incident hit the hardest for people like me. For the Chinese fans that just really wanted to enjoy Hololive content, for Chinese people that really didn't just want anything to be related to politics. I sympathize with a lot of Chinese viewers over in Bilibili, and even those outside of China. Trust me, I am like those guys. But the behaviors that were observed here and the happenings that occurred are all clear that these hard, insane Chinese nationals displayed a behavior that posed a problem in Chinese nationalism that should not be tolerated in any way. Regardless of one's political opinion, one should not act like this. One should not act like complete rabid animals. I respect and have no grudges for the way Chinese are being taught. Like in America, they are simply taught to love their nation and put their country beyond their own lives. But also like in America, they shouldn't teach or laud you to participate in behaviors like these. You know how an American would react if you insult their country? They laugh at it, agree, and shit on their country even more than you can. The Chinese should have recognized that the talents did not intend for any political statements and realized that this was just a genuine mistake. Though to be fair, this is the internet. No one should expect common human decency and critical thinking here, but you know what I mean. Hachama and Koko did not advocate for the independence of Taiwan, but it still completely irks me that the mention of the name is enough to trigger these Chinese nationals. What happened in this incident is the complete opposite of what the Chinese wanted to happen. More people sided with Taiwan because of this, even going as far to change their political stance from indifference and neutrality to fully-fledged support. The Chinese wanted people to respect China and their policies, but if they thought respect could be earned like this, then they were dead wrong. They failed to realize that ultimately, no matter how you looked at it, this was making China look extremely worse than it already did. And to reiterate, this problem was exacerbated in this time because this incident came at a time when the actions of the Chinese Communist Party was starting to get a bit of bad press and notoriety from the rest of the world. So with all that happened, one has to ask these Chinese antis. What was the point? They attacked a girl that ultimately did not even do anything wrong against China, all because of a hatred birthed from a misunderstanding and misinformation. I mean, certainly these stupid dumb headlines didn't help, but it was exactly just that. A misunderstanding and misinformation. Did they just want Coco to be miserable? Well, they achieved that. But to spend money, time, and energy to do all of this only to be entirely hated not just by the Hololive community, but by the rest of the world? One has to ask if it was worth it. Was inefficiently defending the name and pride of China worth it to get exiled out of the community? Well, given that they were raised with the doctrine to respond positively to that, I imagine most would say yes. However, the result of this is that everyone in Hololive and the general VTuber community is very wary of anything Chinese. Many people cannot distinguish if something is from Taiwan, Hong Kong, or from China's mainland, but they are all subjected to the same thing. Even the Chinese Hololive fans, that wasn't even part of the controversy. Distrust and hostility. Just like how China would not forgive Hololive, the Hololive community will also not forgive China. Now, how about the Hololive China members? Well, truthfully, they deserve their fate. RTI is in a very tough spot, last I've heard, but you guys can research that yourselves. But for everything they've done, the harassment, the lack of professionalism to sugarcoat it, the downright manipulation and mockery of their fans, they deserved getting the boot no matter how hard you looked at it. If I was a smart Chinese citizen, I would probably even be disgusted with their actions. If you are a personality and influencer, showing a bit of human decency despite your political opinions should be exercised. As much as how the Chinese like to mock the insanity of the crazies, the Karens, and the anti-vaxxers of the West, I have to say, in this regard, they're pretty much worse. As for the Chinese Hololive fans, well, they're still out there. There are still Hololive clips being uploaded in Chinese social media. Although new VTubers have filled the power vacuum that Hololive left in the Chinese VTubing market, Hololive isn't exactly dead in there. There are still Hololive fans that unfortunately had to remain silent for a majority of the time when this entire drama took place, as of course, they'd be met with vilification by the rest of their countrymen. Hell, there are even Chinese fans who like Hololive but only hate Kiryokoko specifically. Do I call them fans? Well, of course they are. They had their reasons to dislike Kiryokoko, and while I disagree with their reasons, it, it was ultimately what they were culturally conditioned to believe in. As long as they do not stir trouble, they are still pretty welcome. It's a shame really, because although China did a lot in helping raise Hololive to be as popular as they are now, ultimately the action of these extreme few Chinese nationalists 
and the enforcing banishments of various Chinese companies and even the Chinese government themselves had to result in the cutting of all ties. It's like watching a very important childhood friend drift away from you due to massive and unignorable tensions. Ultimately, it comes down to respect, the thing that could have avoided this drama to begin with. The reality now is that China hates Hololive and will actively do everything in its power to block and harass them in any way. Hell, there are still some of these deranged Chinese antis out there that's still causing trouble these days. Antis who had made it their life's purpose to inconvenience cover, I guess, which is sad. I know not what will happen to China and Hololive from this point on. I imagine there will still be future harassments and spams as we saw with Iris and the rest of the members in mid-2021, or that incident where Coco's altar was being kicked out of a game show after learning of her past drama. But I don't think it'll stick for as long as it did during the incident. All I know is that Hololive braved through this rough patch in their history, one step back to take three steps forward. Cover is doing better than ever, having now learned her lesson. Coco is too. She's as free as a wildebeest and can virtually do anything she wants. She is carved into the VTubing history as one of the most important VTubers ever, and the remaining talents in Hololive still has a positive relationship with her. Even Cover didn't give her the treatment that they did with Aloe. Cover actually honored Coco, and for good reason. But is this a good ending? Well, so far it's been peaceful. But it's quite too soon to tell, to be honest. In an industry as young and rapidly evolving as the VTuber industry, one can never really be certain of anything. Trends and positions change as quickly as the wind. There might even come a year where Hololive isn't the dominant and premier global VTubing agency anymore. Maybe Nijisanji will come back to reclaim their throne, or maybe even another agency will challenge them. Regardless, all we can do is support the girls and have fun while they are still here. Because you and I both know that eventually the girls are going to press that stream button one last time. So if you're a VTuber fan, regardless of your political affiliations, what you've done in the past, who your Oshis are, and wherever country you reside in, don't waste your resources with pointless shit like what these aunties were doing. Just enjoy the time that you have with your favorite VTuber and make some happy memories while they are still here. This is the longest video I have ever made so far and I will probably not do something like this ever again. Keyword there is probably. After this video, it's back to the 10 or so minute video format. If you learned a thing or two and enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Please share the video too. Show it to a friend who didn't know much about the controversy or to curious newcomers who want to get up to speed with the whole situation. I want people to be as informed about the incident as much as possible because there are those that are just blatantly misinformed. Again, if you have something to clear up or have new info to add, please leave a comment and link verifiable proof. Please do subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you also have video suggestions, leave a comment or DM me over at Twitter. Again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.